this day and age is metagame as it's just so far away from that and I feel like a lot of the two base timings actually hit optimally against Terrans that uh, they kind of go for that MVP style. Mech. Yeah, yeah. mech. Okay. Well, uh, we'll see how things pan out, but let's introduce our players. Starting in the top right from Team FXO, it is Loli, also known as Plan uh, Anton <laughs> Plabanovic. Uh, Loli plays force at WCS uh, EU. He also placed first in its combined regionals, combining a lot of uh, individual countries like Serbia, like Romania, like Italy, um, just because their scene obviously is not nowhere near as large as some of the other countries like Sweden. Uh, like uh, the UK, like Norway, uh, or, mm -hmm. or Spain. Loli did very well in getting some really nice wins in ZVZ, but now it's ZVT. And last year we saw, or not last year, last season we saw Lo Loli match up against Thorzain pretty well uh, and even able to take out Thorzain. So I'm actually really curious to see how Loli's going to stack up against Gonzi, a Terran that's sort of the opposite style Base of Thorzain. That's right. And, uh, of course, Thorazain is known for being the Spoon Terran, very macro passive and just takes small advantages. Gonzi, not so much. He wants the overt advantages. He wants the very uh, clean cut, I have this many units over you, and I'm going to be a lot more aggressive with them. So we'll see how Loli does with this. Uh, a little bit of uh, interesting placement with the barracks, just to hide the barracks so that if Loli doesn't actually scout out, He'll think it could potentially be a two rats, but there Loli does a good job and just scouts out the base. So he will make sure uh, that he can just 15 hatch very, very smoothly. You can see that the spawning pool is going to go down now at 16, which is the absolute standard time in ZVT. But uh, I do want to mention something really quick. Loli is being so cautious. A lot of times Zergs don't actually scout in the early game stages, Frodan. And it's because they just yeah. want to be super greedy. You know, they just want to get as many drones on minerals as fast as possible to get those hatcheries out, to get those spawning pools out. Uh, but Loli sending a 10 drone just to go scout out. And look at this. Six drones are being placed down here just to be safe in case there's another proxy, ga uh, not gateway, proxy barracks somewhere on the map and he has to defend against an all-in. And it is Cloud Kingdom, uh, a map that Turax is very strong on. Gon's even playing into that knowledge and placing a bunker behind the mineral line and uh, trying to force a reaction out of Lolis, but uh, he should be safe. Nice pull back there, and that Marine really won't be doing anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that 10 scout is a respect because Gonzi used the Turax all the time, all the time. In <laughs> fact, we've seen him in NASL Turax in certain situations, so... Uh, it's not a bad judgment call at all, and that's based off Loli's scouting information. Loli loves preparing for his opponents, said so in his uh, profile every time he interviewed him, researches his opponents uh, very extensively, and so Loli's taking all the precautions. Now, he's also going to poke into this natural area and force a lift uh, very early on, which is also a nice win for uh -oh. Loli. Uh-oh. And Gandhi isn't or ready. Oh, my gosh, Gandhi, what are you doing? Ah! He might lose a depot. Froden. Ah, he is. That depot is. Uh, well. Uh, ah, depot's gone. Oh my wow. gosh. And he lost one link for two links for that. That hurts a little bit. I mean, obviously he'll have to remake that. But the fact of the matter is, there could be a lot of all ins that yeah. come directly behind this. So I think Gonti should be a little bit wary that some sort of like Zergen Bane link could be potentially here. Uh, no, uh -huh. he scouted the main, so he still has no gas. Oh, that's so true. So that gives him some call. concert. Oh, he's picking up a mule! Oh, man, if he got that mule. Uh, although Gonzi is going to be on triple orbital, so we can't really uh, underemphasize or overemphasize the importance yes. of sniping a, a mule or two. But you know what? When you get up into the base and see, oh, you have no reactor on your barracks? Oh, you also have no factory down? Something's a little bit suspicious, Froden. I mean, it's already six minutes into the game, and it's like, where is your stuff? So, Loli, just by process of elimination, should say, oh, my opponent went for a fast expansion. Okay, uh, so it's three fast command centers I'm dealing with. How am I going to reply to this? Now, Loli has been known to go very tech-oriented. You can see how fast these two gases are already. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a third and fourth gas being placed very soon, but... Uh, especially when you know you're up against three command centers, 
It's actually really, really kind of unorth... I wouldn't say unorthodox, but normally you just wait off a little bit to get your gases, really saturate your bases, and rely on queens, similar to the DRG style, where you get six queens, and then you actually start, you know, mass, uh, mass teching. Well, uh, Gun's also going to pressure this third base, which is really nice as well. Um, I do like that DRG style that you allude to, Andre. Um, I, I love watching mid-game aggression uh, when it comes to Zerg. I mean, we're seeing more and more of it, too. Sartail Life just re showed a lot of people how to place, uh, play against an aggressive Terran-like Marine King. Yeah. Where I think, and everyone mutually agrees um, that Artosa said it best, where in the matchup, it seemed like Marine King thought he was the aggressor, constantly pushing with bio and poking everywhere. But when Zerg's the one meeting them out in the middle of the map and putting the aggression on in response, then then Terran's the one that's in the middle of the trouble. And Loli is pretty aggressive when he gets his units early on. He's not a Zerg that necessarily tries to max out on drones all the time. Um, this bunker placement is very nice. He take advantage of the lack of vision. Uh, but as long as Loli, he can transfuse, so his saturation is perfectly fine. So. Yeah, I don't think he'll be um, he'll be losing anything really. With good transfuse, you can see he's keeping all of his queens alive. Not only that, he's taking out the bunkers very easily. So that's why I wasn't too worried. I mean, Gonzi is putting yeah. on a little bit of pressure here, but it's just not enough. Now two Hellions are going to swing into the natural, it looks like. And it looks like two Hellions already did. Excuse <laughs> me, I missed that completely. Uh, uh, but he's going to roast just one drone, get up here. Let's go ahead and look at how many workers killed so far. Eight. So I apologize for that Hellion run by. Well, yeah, so. it was all a distraction. It's a trap. As, uh, oh, the drones are running straight to the oh, Hellions. No. Talk about being <laughs> standing up to the bullies. Andre, that's the theme of tonight, man. <laughs> I, I I think we need to pull up that video and show oh, it in between games, dude, Elliot. That is so nasty, too. We we need to pull up that video if, if that's okay. But uh, uh, Gandhi is uh, he's he's following up with some pretty standard Banshee harass, although he's only making one Banshee and switching directly back into Bio. Where is so that mixing banshee? it up? Okay, there it is. I was wondering where that Banshee was, but you can see the the four queens out in the field. Definitely very helpful. At this point in the game, I mean, you're able to deflect so many different attacks. Hellions and Banshees actually lack a lot of power and a lot of, uh, I would say, like burst potential. You know, Marines are able to actually target down a queen pretty fast with good numbers, whereas Hellions kind of tickle queens. Banshees, they have these, you know, huge attacks and then they have a little bit of uh, animation to just reload. So that's a lot of times when you can actually transfuse, which makes queens just so effective at dealing with Hellion Banshee. I really feel like it's a good style to go, don't get me wrong, but I think, uh, you know, overall Hellion Marine is better for the power. But, of course, the finesse goes to the Banshees. Wow, look at this, Ferdinand. What? Fourth Command Center. Oh, Fourth Command Center, wow. Uh, Gonzi playing greedy, greedy of all greed. Yeah. He uh, goes double eBay into fourth command center even before he's able to establish his medevac count. Uh, pretty greedy, but it's a it's it's a good mix up again. This is kind of goes to show you that people's styles have been really changing uh, due to the meta game of how safe it is to play super greedy. I mean, Gonzi's not even really like walling off at his natural. And we see some turns at this stage. When they want to go for a four base, they kind of wall off the top of the natural ramp where the rocks is, either with a command center planetary or some barracks, supply depots. But I mean, Gandhi's playing so minimalist that he doesn't really have anything. Everything's in the open, including these Hellions that are free for the pickings. And uh, this is definitely very annoying, but at the same time, it gives Loli lots of good oh scouting my. information. Yeah, but it's unfortunate because the planetary fortress is already being made. This is a gigantic advantage right now for Gandhi. I mean, really, all he has to do is sit back from here. Uh, he doesn't even need to actually do those, you know, Fable 2-2 timings because he's invested a lot into getting this expansion, getting that SEV count up, and he wants to actually materialize from that base, and he can do so. You can see his production is really, really good, but it could be greater. He can go up to four factories. He could go up to probably 12 barracks. It's quite substantial, uh, and obviously he's not there yet. So I would think Gonti actually waits a little bit. Uh, if he doesn't wait, then it does actually empower Loli a little bit more. But Loli is definitely um, needing to do something about that expansion because he cannot let that just go up uh, and, and and obviously be materialized. If he if he loses this time here, he loses the game basically. 
Well, uh, Loli is taking up the hive and getting a set gas is number seven and eight. Very important to establish your mid to late game. But just like you said, I mean, Gonzi's now has everything in production. The supply count's healthier than Loli's. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because Loli's trying to mass tech. Loli is also trying to squeeze in things very quick as well. Like, his hive is pretty quick. Even before, like, he, he's able to even get plus two, plus two. Like, that's oh super God. greedy. I can't believe this. I can't believe Gonzi is able to max and take his fourth base way before uh, for the 2-2 two -two timing. Like, I thought, you know, he would be at, like, probably, like, 160, 170. Yeah, like, he wouldn't have a huge punch. Exactly. But you can see how greedy Gonzi has been playing 92 being able to do SUVs, this. man. Like, this is, oh, my God. 92 SUVs to 98 Jesus. workers, but Gonzi also gets fungal in the ramp. What, what are these ambushes we see out of Zerg today? This is quite ridiculous that Gandhi is able to, or Lowe's able to shut down the, the a huge portion of the push. Although Lonely doesn't really have that many units uh, out other than a few Zerglings and the Infestors. More Zerglings are on the way. Can Lowly get there in time before the units take a strong position? Gandhi's coming with double tank reinforcements with a lot of bio. Oh, and this time he's more well anchored. A lot of medivacs are low on health, but it doesn't matter because as long as they keep the units charged up yeah. and he can deny his fourth base, Gonzi will be infinitely ahead. Yeah, and you can see Gonzi actually uh, not macroing the best, but still, like, his production is so powerful just with this that he's able to consistently just send units, send units, and these reinforcements are so hard to deal with. Zergen trying to counterattack, but a ton of units, reinforcement units, are here to deflect that so easily. And it's because of his production. I mean, you can see taking out the fourth base, Lowly is really struggling here. Gonzi showing a little bit of life in NASL after being 0-3. He's right now at the bottom of the league. I like what we're seeing so far. And uh, Lowly also at the bottom of that league as well. This That's is kind true. of a match between the two the two bottom placers in the division, and the winner kind of kind of moves up to at least be able to s potentially stay for season five. Uh, if they can even make a big stand, but Gonzi just has so much of his army. He's got 91 workers, but Loli's got 93 workers. It's so funny because their armies are so small. There's only 70 supply of units for Loli, and in fact, some of his investors are low on energy. He's not going to be able to do too much, although he does catch a lot of them. There's still plenty more marine tank by where they came from. <laughs> I know. It's like never ending, Frodan. And you can see so many more units behind this. The Medvax are even healing up. Man. He's just a <laughs> he he's literally to. just attack moving. He actually does not need to do anything. I mean, this is the power of uh, Terran economy and being greedy. Um, you can see this reflective in Flash's games. Flash is definitely a player that does a very similar style to what Gonzi just did, although he mechs. And it just seems like he's playing or outplaying his opponent so much, but it's the fact that he knows how to macro. He knows how to be aggressive and abusive, and it pays major dividends in StarCraft. All right, well, Loli uh, has a few Infestors and Brewlords out, which does pose quite a problem to the lack of Vikings, but now Gonzi's getting three Thors out and switching over to heavy, heavy, heavy Marines. 3-3 three, three is almost done for Gonzi, while 3-3 three, three just started for Loli. Um, and that's that that's my, in itself might tell you how this battle is going to turn out, I'm yeah. sure. But he's got a lot of Marauders to tank damage. Uh, one of the Infestors almost drops immediately. The Brewers are trying to work on it as much as they can, but Gonzi's got so much. One flank can just yeah. take out everything. This is going to be like the Pult Micro on Entomb Valley, just without the Micro. <laughs> it's going to be Marines, Marauders, and Siege Tanks destroying Broodlord and Fester. And you might be like, is that possible? Yeah. Yeah, it is. You got six Vikings out at a time, too. Gonzi oh really on God. point with his production facilities. Uh, fifth base already established with two more command centers. Love the timings on these extra command centers that every Terran is really trying to incorporate nowadays. And even starting to get air weapons. Why not, man? When you And high sec auto tracking and building armor. Gonzi on top of every single aspect of this game. You know, I was doubting whether or not he would win. But now that he has those two upgrades, GG. No, that's not true, Ronan. Please don't be so biased. He needs new steel frame. <laughs> okay? Once he gets that, then no in, one will then ever no break. no one will. And then he needs like 10 bunkers across. See, Frodan, these are the things that you have to think no. about that if you didn't That's have me around... That's why I'm not around, GM, man. If you didn't have me around, you'd be like, oh, man, how could I have won that game? Oh, Neo Steel Frame. That's right. It's funny, too, because then you can also store more SUVs into your planetaries. Oh. So you can load up more of your SCVs and then drop the command center and build a planetary in their base with more SCVs to repair. Ten instead of five. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, Do you know what that is? That's a double. That's a double. That's double. two times. One hundred percent. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Lowly is just sharking around with his units, just looking for maybe some strays caught off guard. But yeah. you can see this triple medevac drop in the back of Lowly's base is going to uh, do a lot of damage. So many drones, they don't have a job assignment. This is why it's better off to always have a job, guys. Stay active, stay busy, and uh, nothing really can that got that uh, Lowly can do. There's just too many units here, too many units out of position. Zerglings are rushing into the scene. Greater Spire will drop. There's nothing that stops Gandhi from just picking off the rest of his units uh, after enough unit forces come. Gonna pick off the spawning pool as well. Great pickoffs from Gandhi while he's pushing across the center of the map. He's got a flood of Vikings ready to meet out any Brewlords, which uh, are, there's seven of them <laughs> with only a few Corruptors. Oh Fungal! my goodness. Oh, oh. won't even get matter, get man. Get get how many, uh, how many uh, I know. There I just Vikings there are. Because these are always beautiful. Yeah. Pop. Boom. Welcome to the fireworks. It's, uh, it's July 4th weekend, man. In America. Only in America. That's true. Independence Day does not exist in uh, countries across the world uh, on the same date. And uh, I guess uh, at this point, Gonzi's just going to send Thors to take on the entire army. <laughs> wow. I guess uh, Gonzi's just so rich. Look at this 5,000, 2,000. And he's just still making marines, man. Talk about being very frugal with your money making. I would make 10 command centers right now. It's okay, Andre. You know what they say, right? They say that a lot of that every day if you save $2 until you're 60, you'd be a millionaire. So that's what Gonzi is doing, man. Every day just spends only what he needs to and nothing more. Although he's making five ghost academies. <laughs> 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 he just started dropping nukes everywhere. That's good. It's going to be, if you, if you can even get to that point. Now, Lowly has the right mindset, right? As long as you have Infestor Brewlord, almost anything is possible if you can get good enough engagement, because what if it happens if you have enough momentum to kill his entire army, then you're in his production facilities? He can't remax, yep. and all of a sudden you, you win. Uh, we've seen crazy scenarios like that with Stefano on this map. DRG on uh, Antigua Shipyard. There's those kinds of situations. Lenok on Antigua Shipyard. Like those kinds of situations where it's like, wow, I really don't think that they can win. But if they get a good engagement, um, and, and the unit composition's right, like what uh, Cloud was saying in his profile, anything can happen. Hey man, there's a lot of momentum that happens in this game, and you're absolutely right. I mean, all it takes is one good battle, and you're back into the game. You you can even win it. It happened so many times in TVP. Uh, it does happen so many times. Wow, wow, wow that nice fungal. fungals. <laughs> and this is what we're talking about, Frodan. Doesn't even really matter. Attacking into an enclosed position, but does he have enough fungal growths? He puts out another one, but there's just so much stuff here, Frodan. Uh, I think Loli will be able to hold, though. He's got plenty of fungals left, and the marine count is pretty low, and more infestors are rushing over. It's just that how does Loli deal with the three Thors and the massive amount of marines that are coming? You know what Dark would do? Infested Terrans everywhere. Yeah, this honestly, is man. <laughs> that's not very Lowly's dark. Lowly's at 17 right investors, there. and everyone would see like, wow, that's a lot of gas. But man, Dark tripled that. Yeah, no, 17 times 8 is 136. He could have 136 investors out in the field. Is that right? 17 times 8? Isn't that 106? Uh, oh, no, you're right, 136. Okay. I am really bad at math, man. Thank I, God. I thought I was It's OK, was because uh, Gonzi. He, the only map that you need to worry about is that there's three nukes out and fourth on the way. More ghosts are coming out into the field. He's even getting nitro packs. What? No. It's going to go mass reapers to no. close out. Although I've seen that kind of utilized. Uh, I ha I've actually done it. It's really good like in TVP, I think. To do it late game to snipe a bunch of stuff. Like randomly, like pylons, stray pylons, a bunch of tech buildings. Because think of TVP, would you rather have five marauders or ten? Well, let's say ten marauders. Or 20, 20, uh, what are those Reapers. things called? Reapers. Going into the main base and just ravaging everything. I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's hard to tell. Oh. Depends on what what uh, what I'm feeling at that time of the day. Ooh, Vikings get fungled a lot. Uh, Loli has an incredible amount of uh, infestors, and there's wow, a lot of units that are going to drop. Beautiful fungal. And there's a lot of Vikings that are dying. Uh, Gonti is still filthy rich. This is this is disgusting, man. This is. He's, use, he's using the Vikings to kind of, uh, just as his play toys at this point. There's really no real purpose of the Vikings because uh, the Brutalor count is very low. 
And he's got enough Marines, and Ghost can actually honestly snipe the Blue Lords out at this point. <laughs> What's so funny? Gonzi sees his, <laughs> his third base is killed. He's like, what do I do? Let what? me inject. What? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> or not Gonzi, I'm in low league. Oh, me. I was like, man, did Gonzi, <laughs> how did Gonzi have a, a No, Lolly was like, oh man, I just got nuked in my third base. Nah, let's just inject, <laughs> we're good. Well, uh, we have a lot of ghosts coming out here for Gonzi. He's trying to EMP the Infestors. I mean, the Infestors are the only thing keeping him alive. Can he also get some good snipes or even kill off some of the Infestors? Oh, the Infestors! They're all they're all running away. They don't know where to run. They're running right. They're running left. Gonzi is nuking himself. He doesn't even know what to do. He's got so much money. I've always wondered what it's like to own Google. I guess I should just play Gonzi's style of Terran. Hope he got... Whoa! Gonzi's the Blue went straight into the nukes! <laughs> oh man! Well, <laughs> what is going on in this game? It's OP Gonzi style, I have, bro. I have no idea what's it's going on. It's the lamest joke I can think of, but this is Gonzi has just so many units, so much money. He's making five more nukes at a time. He's got an upgrade that he'll never ever need. He made nitro packs, and uh, never even made a single reaper. I've known kids like that in, in high school, man. They get like the sickest like skateboard ever, and they cannot even stand on two feet and, uh, and, and stay balanced, man. It's, it's quite ridiculous. Uh, Gonzi is absolutely controlled everything. Lowly now down to his actually his eight mineral patches at his third is still has minerals at 30 minutes in the game. Yeah. It's actually quite it's actually quite interesting. Yeah, I know you're looking for impressive. But you're like, oh, yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's 30 minutes in the game, man, and you still have mineral patches. Lowly doing everything he can, but this is just the power of macro. GG gets called out <laughs> after 30 minutes of frivolous money money spending. That's like a pure example of yeah. What can I do with all this cash? You know what happened uh, this one time in New Jersey? My dad was actually the architect of uh, Six Flags Great Adventure. He uh, did a couple of the buildings there. And we got VIP passes, mm -hmm. okay? And you know how to it's six flags? to Six Flags? And you get like four second access, right? No, 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 no. This is the park shuts down for everybody but VIPs. So oh. there's literally like 500 to 1,000 people in the park. And everything's free. Food, drinks. So do you know what I did? I bought a Slurpee for nothing. I took one sip and I threw it out. It was a $10 Slurpee. <laughs> Why? Because I could. That's Gonzi style right there. <laughs> That's what Gonzi Opa is. Opa right? Gonzi style. <laughs> Guys, uh, the game number one is brought to you by Epson, the number one protective brand worldwide. Check them out at Epson.com while we take a break and kind of uh, laugh more about how rich we wish we were. Don't go anywhere. More action coming right at you right after this.